is still in the dark about whether you're playing this weekend or have you got any indication? Well, we haven't been told we're not, so we're preparing to play and um, yeah, there's a game on scheduled for tomorrow night, so we get to um, we get to see what happens with that before um, before we know for sure what's happening on uh, Friday night. But we're preparing to play. What's it been like this week? Pretty much the same for um, everyone in the world. You know, a lot of um, a lot of grey area. Um, I suppose we all want to know where things are going to settle and. You know, what our responsibilities are and how we can combat the challenge that we face at the moment. Um, you know, our boys are footballers and, and, our, and our staff, you know, we, we play our trade day to day. You guys have got a job to do. Everyone's, everyone's got a, um, a work or a profession that they, that they want to know that they can still provide for their family. So that's that sort of that level of uh, surety is not there for us at the moment, so for us it's been no different than everyone else. Um, look, as long as we're following um, the advice of the experts, um, and clearly you know, whether it's our leaders, the Australian leaders, and how we're going to deal with it as a country, and then the, clearly there's, there's premiers from a, from a state level, and um, I believe they're taking their advice from, from health officers, um, you know, locally, nationally and globally. Uh, as long as we're adhering to those guidelines, I don't think there's any reason why we wouldn't continue in our work environment. Um, much like you guys are doing right now. Um, and if we, can, if we can tip into those parameters that are, that are expected from, from a health perspective and a safety perspective and still and still play and still do what we do, I think that um, that's clearly been the players' preference and, it's, and it seems to be what's well, definitely our club's preference. Um, but there's, um, you know, there's bigger fish to fry. But if we can, why wouldn't we? No, if we're going to practice tackling, mate, we're probably going to be a little bit closer than that. Um, but once again, you know, we'll follow we'll follow the parameters as, as closely as we possibly can, um, and and follow the advice of, of the health professionals, because we want to make make sure that we're helping in the solution of, of what the world is facing, not just um, adding to the problems. But that's that's got to be a part of the decision making, no doubt. Preparing for games to be short of water. There has there's been a lot thrown around. Um, there's nothing concrete as such. Um, so we went with a wider squad. Our boys have been told, here's a wider squad. Um, um, we could have shorter quarters. We don't, we don't know what, whether round two, you know, we, we don't know about round one, we don't know about round two. So if you want definitives, mate, oh, I can't give it to you. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've probably had, um, I think the most important thing in situations like this is, is open communication and, you know, we've, we believe that we've been in an environment that's been pretty good at picking up, you know, individual concerns, not sweeping them under the carpet, so everyone has a voice um, in our four walls. And um, if a player wasn't comfortable playing, you know, we're, the last thing we're going to do is impose that on any individual and if someone's not comfortable coming to work well then you don't come to work so uh, one thing we spoke about this morning is our is our purpose as as a group our purpose as individuals yeah, we all want to be happy and healthy let's put that in the bank but we all want to have a purpose to what we're doing why we spend the time that we spend on on this um, and it's not always for a long-term benefit sometimes it's simply for the enjoyment of being in each other's company and doing what we have a passion to do and what we love to do. So the session today was brilliant, you know, off the back of blokes actually enjoying having this as, a, as an anchor in what is um, a circumstance that there's not many anchors around. Taylor, I've said this morning, uh, Kendall's plus at least one other that have been tested. Do you have any definitive answers, uh, numbers on how many guys have been tested? Not definitive. I think we've, we've had three or four that have, I'm not sure if they've been tested, but they've had symptoms. I know we've had a couple of um, 
couple have been tested, have been negative, and we don't have any currently that are waiting for waiting for an outcome. So we're clean. Um, and I think that, as I said, I think every work environment will be, every school, um, you know, every club will be going through that. Fox Channel 7, the TV stations will be going through that because you'll have some um, people that will be struck down with either cold or flu symptoms and, and in the current environment, you get a bit of an itch in your throat and you think, you know, I wonder if I've got it. So you, you sort of follow through because of your, not only you care for yourself, but you care for the people that you're around. So we've been diligent with that and um, fortunate enough to have negatives. So at this stage, you know, we're, we're clean. Yeah, well, the boys did a little bit extra after you know the, the main squad did the, did the early part of the session then we did extra. Now there's no games for those guys so we try and keep the um, keep them up to speed as much as possible. It's um, that's a first world problem though at the moment, but the boys um, the boys will keep going and they're hard yards when I mean it, it, individually it's it's really hard to invest in something when you don't know what the outcome's going to be or or whether you're going to be rewarded for the work that you put in so there is a little bit of gray area with that but um, as I said the reward is in doing it of its own accord um, and if we can keep you know enjoying it enjoying the journey and enjoying each other's company well then that's that's the reward the short-term reward that we get which gives us a capacity to stay open to whatever happens in the medium and long term You are. If uh, if we play, he'll play. So, you know, that's um, probably the weirdest um, way to play your first game if it, if it happens. Um, and we, we announced that to the playing group this morning. You get that out, mate, before anyone else does. Um, <laughs> but I, that's, um, that's the environment that we... No one gets to choose what happens around them, but I'm pretty sure if, uh, if we're playing on Friday night, the Tyler's not going to mind too much. What have you spoken to the players about not having that Oh. Well, it's pretty hard to say how much you get or how much you don't get because it's it's been a long time since we haven't played in front of a, a crowd. Now we, one of the major drivers and one of the major purposes for for us doing what we do is to represent our the army and um, and the two way relationship that takes place you know day to day in some way either through our through our social or through our digital media, but then in, on game day, you know, over the fence, it's tangible. Um, but ultimately, there's plenty of um, there's plenty of other things, places that you get your energy from, and probably where it starts first and foremost is from each other. So um, that's a, that's a challenge that every club will face. Um, should should we see the season begin and continue, and that's one that we're pretty confident that we'll be able to handle. Every other. Um, yeah, I, I can think of two. One is that if you, if we can, we should, because the boys want to. Um, this is what we do. This is this is our livelihood. This is our, our passion. This is what we're involved in. So if if it fits in, I guess if we're making things worse, well then pull it. But if there's if it's a negligible impact on um, the health and the fighting of this the, the virus. Well then, I think we should go on and um, you know, follow our passions and 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 ply our trade. Uh, the other part of it is is potentially what we can provide externally. Like there's going to be a lot of people that are at home that have twiddling their thumbs a little bit more than normal. You know, watching the footy on the weekend or even during the week, if if it comes to pass, maybe we provide a, a little bit more normality of something that um, might not be there otherwise. So. There might be a bit of a social responsibility in there, and there also, and, and our players have spoken about that. And it's a, it's not a, it's not a, a situation that we, um, we've ever anticipated. But it's, we know that football has always been an important part of the fabric of Melbourne, um, let alone sort of further, you know, the southern states, but, and the rest of Australia. But maybe, maybe it becomes an even more crucial part in in times like this.
from a health perspective. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's in in the end. Yeah, we we've been we've been canvassed by, through the um, through the AFL. Um, obviously, there's commission, and then there's the executive, the CEOs, presidents, and then the playing group and the senior coaches. So there's a there's a few stakeholders there that. Uh, all want to have a say and all want to do their, put their hand up and do their best. But I think we've been led really well by Gil and, and Steve Hocking through this process. Um, I know that we've been led really well here from Mark Anderson and Jeff Walsh in particular. Uh, and obviously Ed, who represents us at AFL level and, and has been involved in you know, big picture stuff going forward, what this means for the club, for the AFL and, and how we manage it as best we can. Um, to be honest, if the AFL say jump, we say how high at the moment because they are largely in charge of the competition and, and, the, and, and what potential impacts or the best way forward for the competition and for the good of the game and the future of the game. Um, I suppose our feedback is around being able to, uh, the, the health and wellbeing and welfare of our playing group and, and how we can look after that from a football sense we let the we let the um, experts deal with the um, the health aspect from the virus sense, but we still have players that their body is their tool of their trade, and we want to make sure we keep them ha happy and healthy as much as we can. Yeah, I think what I found. As I said, consistent communication in times of stress is important, and being you know, un reinforcing what you do know, and trying to focus as much on what you can control. Um, so in that sense, we haven't we haven't looked at the what ifs as much as um, as much as we can. To be honest, we, we're, we're now narrowing our focus on what we hope we can control and what we think is coming up in the short term, because it has changed so so quickly and evolved. Um, so quickly, so yeah, we haven't done a lot of speculating on that. Um, we, you know, we understand that that's that's a real possibility to to not play footy for a week or a month or or longer, um, and we'll cross that bridge when we get to it because you know we're we're preparing for the the more positive outcome for us. But if we if um, if that's not to occur, we'll, we'll we'll deal with it as best we can from there. Oh, look, he's he's been almost for a lot of it. Um, he's a great talent. Um, yeah, he's actually had you know, really good form over the last three or four weeks on the track and and in his and in the Marsh series games. He's adaptable. He can play midfield. He can play on the wing. Can go deep forward. So we've seen. We've seen enough to think that it's the time. The time's right for, to bring him in and, and give him a crack. And if you're talking about energy from outside the fence, you know there's nothing like having a debutant to galvanise the players into understanding how much, how important we are to each other, just to provide that energy and to be there for the people around us. So I think Tyler helps with that. So I will definitely be asking the question. Yeah. Uh, if they could be uh, the mum and dad and, and sister, like his brother will be there because he'll be playing as well. So um, if mum and dad and sister can be three of the hundred, well then we'll do that. Or or just open the open the open the roof a little bit so we can get another four hundred in. He should be right to go. Yeah. Uh, not far away. We've got. As most coaches would get up and say, we've probably seven or eight blokes legitimately stiff. Um, guys that we feel that could come in and play a role and we wouldn't lose much if, if the if the 51 49 went the other way for them. Um, and given the reality of what we may face going forward, that's going to be pretty important. So uh, we've always had a fairly strong squad mentality and blokes coming up and contributing when it's their time, and our boys will be ready to go, and Isaac being one of those. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.